Okay. And I didn't put up a Bible verse to cover my face. I just have my website. And I didn't even look at Bible verses because I've been reading Bible verses all morning along with my poetry. I'm a writer, so I'm more along those lines. A lot of times we come up with uh, interesting things. And way back in the day, I never really applied myself. But now that I'm a Christian, I really apply myself. And I would like to talk about being in the trying lane. Because I don't think many people are. We all like to make excuses. And there's a lot of discussion right now between whether you're saved or not by your works. Whether you need to show like a visible change in you. And the thing too is it, it, it doesn't really matter. Well, I mean it does. It's very important whether you're always saved and I think you are. But that's neither here nor there. My thing is, is if you're not even trying and there's no visible signs outwardly of your faith, you're just not allowing God to bless you. And I think that's the big problem. Like, if Christianity works, which it does, why aren't we taking God at His word? Why are so few of us reading the Bible every day? I read the Bible every day. I've gotten through it so many times. The thing is, it's not difficult. There's always time. I have done so much this morning because I've placed my faith in Christ and followed that path. And it's not going to be an easy path. And it's on His time and not on our time. And a lot of times we give up and don't want to be in the trying lane because it's just easier to, you know, pull off to the side of the road. But if you're not in the trying lane and you're just kind of parking or coasting, it's just sliding. You're just sliding down and falling. Not going to... Might not damn you. Because that, that's not what I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about if you're not even trying. There's no reason for God to bless you. Because you've already given up. You're, you're not a really great example anymore. You don't want to be a good example. You, you're comfortable in your, your cultural Christianity. And that comfort brings you more joy than God in Christ and the Holy Spirit. I want to be comfortable in God in Christ and the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be comfortable in a building or a place. I would be comfortable knowing that I have followed his ways. And everybody gets upset because they don't like what God has to offer because he doesn't allow certain things. The thing is, it's not about us as an individual. It is about everyone alive. And that's where we just go haywire. But God won't... Yeah, but maybe that's best for you. Maybe you'll actually be happier. And the thing is, is they hide the statistics in the actual data. Because they don't want you to know that God's ways are true. And so much data has come in recently. And if you believe in science, like so many people claim... If you look at the hard science, all the data shows and the, the statistics show that you are happiest, you are healthiest by doing God's way and trying God's way. Your relationships last longer. Everything is better. And the thing is, is I am sick and tired of people trying to say that there's no joy in following Christ. And they always focus on what we're not allowed to do you know how many options we have we literally have like infinite options that you can do by following christ and you want to just tell us that oh you guys won't let us do this one little thing or this couple little things oh no we have to dress a certain way maybe or oh no but that's a real burden it's not a real burden <laughs> it's really not a day of rest is a great thing by the way I would love to have a day of rest. 
Some days you don't, because if you want to succeed in life, you got to hustle. So those days and rest, they're kind of few and far in between, but they are great. My kids are grown. I rested too much when they were young. And the thing too is people tell us all sorts of stuff. That's just bad advice. Like, if you wonder why your kids are bad, we did it. We did it. I take full responsibility for how my kids turned out. And they take full responsibility for how they turned out. That's how it's supposed to be. I have responsibility for my actions. Yes, society has responsibility too. Everybody has 100% responsibility for everything. You can't pass the buck. You have to stay trying. And it's not going to be easy. You're going to fail. But that doesn't mean you give up. And that's what we've done. And we, we backpedal and we're like, oh, I, oh, I know. God's so mean. He won't let us do stuff. And I, really, that's what you're going to go for. We don't understand. If God is infinite, we're inside God. Period. Not a question. It's a true statement. God has made so many statements in the Bible about being infinite. Look it up. Go to like the King James dot org. Do a Bible search for, you know, infinite or the words that also mean infinite because one search isn't going to do it because there are different terms. And unfortunately, the net, you have to be specific to find the verses. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. If you look at all the ways that God is infinite, that means we're inside of him. I wouldn't want to hear like even two voices in my head that disliked me constantly knowing their every wicked thought or even the ones that liked me. You know how like tempting it would be just to like just flood the world constantly? You know how many wicked thoughts people have in a day? And I know people are like, oh, I don't have any. Yeah, you have wicked thoughts. I'm not going to lie and say that I don't have wicked thoughts. But if you think that you don't have any wicked thoughts, probably that itself is a wicked thought. <laughs> People being so prideful that, I am Mr. Perfect, I harumph. No, you don't. We're all bad. It says only God is good. <laughs> That's right out of Jesus' mouth. Only God is good. Right? And that, therefore it means only God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit are good. Everything else is pretty much junk. God gave us free will and we need to try and quit whining and whining and whining about what we can't do. We can dance. Yes, there are restrictions. And you know what? I would rather ballroom dance and do like some nice dances than to like see people just shaking their booty. And that's not hard. Anymore, I could just like shake your butt. It, it, it's not, it's, it's not really a skill. You can still dance. You can sing. You can write. There's so much you can do. You can play with your children. There's kickball. There's soccer. There's football. There's tons of stuff. You can go on a walk. You can fall in love. And then you don't have to worry. If you follow God's way at 100%, you can fall in love with somebody that's an actual love because if you don't have God's love in you and you're not infinite inside, if you're not infinite inside, you don't have love. You think it's love, but it's chemicals playing tricks on your brain because you have a hole in your heart and soul that can only be filled by the Holy Spirit. It's an infinite hole. Only infinite can fill infinite. No finite thing is going to take its place. So if you don't have that foundational you know, Holy Spirit in you, we're going to fail and it's going to be too hard to try. And don't, don't push back against the Holy Spirit because what it really is, when they say we're standing in the gap, there's like three ways you could be in the gap. You can be in the gap facing the world and standing against the world. You could be in the gap facing the Holy Spirit and trying to say, no, not today, Holy Spirit, not today. Or you could be turned to the side, letting it all go by, and not doing anything, being indifferent. And why would you be indifferent? 
Which way do you think in the gap is going to help you? Yeah, there may be lots of pro problems that come up from being an actual Bible-believing, practicing Christian. But there are more problems that come up when you're not. I've been praying, like, <laughs> and just in the middle of praying, seeing stuff happen that is, like, just a sign that I'm being protected. There's, there's no doubt that God will work through you if you let him. And you don't make excuses and you don't cry that it's not fun to do it God's way. And here's just a novel idea. Why don't you pray to enjoy God's way? Instead of whining about everything else. Pray to enjoy God's way. Get into the trying lane. Improve your life. Improve your relationships improve your health open up your Bible don't give up on anything try to be an example it's not gonna happen overnight I'm still fat I'm still working on things but the thing is I know what is healthy we know in our hearts if we let the Spirit guide us we know what is good we know what is bad and we we just want things that we shouldn't and it's not just that they're bad for us <laughs> that it's bad for other people around us we are not supposed to be selfish we are supposed to be sacrificing our time our resources everything for others so when we say oh well i mean it's just oh well no what we really should be saying is why aren't you focusing on all the good that is allowed and encouraged under God. If we follow God's ways, we'd have a much more honest society. Everything would be better in an honest society. We wouldn't have all this debt. We wouldn't have the poverty that we have. And if you, if you think for a second any of these modern conservatives want to conserve anything, they don't. They don't want to go back to actually what the Bible says. And it goes for all the Judeo-Christian beliefs. Especially if you look at the just the Judeo part, which there's a lot in there, and the Old Testament of things that we're not supposed to be doing. We shouldn't be in debt for like generations. Or for our entire lives. Does America look anything like Proverbs? Do our laws look anything like Proverbs? And yeah, the thing is, we do need to have freedom, but you also have to have consequences. And everybody wants to be like, well, forgive. Yes, there is forgiveness. And it's clear in there, but God won't be mocked. You will have consequences for your sin. And the government... It's supposed to punish people who break the social norms in contracts. And I'm not saying well, they break them consensually. But that doesn't mean you can call whatever you want, whatever you want. Don't distort the language to just try to get your way. That's wicked. We just need to try. And if we actually tried... And we gave up on following conservative values. Instead, it followed biblical values. The world would be a much better place. And we wouldn't encourage our children to be debt slaves. Our society would not tolerate encouraging children to be debt slaves. They would not. We need to try. And when we actually have things and we build things up, this time we need to keep them we had so many christian organizations and we gave them up if you look at through history we found it so much and we gave it up we didn't want to try we didn't want the secular society to feel bad 
and look what they're trying to do. We felt bad because people were saying we don't want you to force your views on to us. But that is exactly what the same people who complained about Christianity forcing their views onto them are trying to do to you and your children. When we make organizations and stuff, we need to have, A, the government out of it, and we need to stand strong and firm and allow ourselves to flourish and allow God to work through us. But what happens is we want to cave. It's going to take work. <laughs> At least in the triglade, the, so a lot of the pain that you will suffer will be rewarded. In the giving up lane, where you're just sliding off into nothingness because you've just tapped out, the pain is not growth. The pain is the slow death of giving up. I'd rather have the pain of growth than the pain of giving up. Life will have pain. You alone choose the pain. I'm going to try. I would rather work myself to death for the glory of God than slide to death being a waste. I want my kids to see that I'm doing stuff. I don't want them to give up. And I screwed up as a young father because A, I wasn't Christian. And trust me, I found out the hard way materialism as an incentive doesn't work. Your kids won't try really hard for materialism alone. You need something deeper. And not only that, you, you can't coddle them. They need to learn. By the age of 12, we're, they're already supposed to be adults. When a 12 year old you know is anywhere near an adult, is already prepared and just solid in the word of God, knows actual skills, ready to learn some stuff, you know, has their life together more or less. <laughs> then again, what 40 year old do you know that has their life together? Not many, and that's a problem. Because we failed in our teaching. And I failed to be the example that I needed to be. I didn't show my children when I was like actually applying and trying. I, I should have. But I also messed up because I let just evil distractions just consume my entirety. I wasted decades just with mind-numbing distractions. You, you, the order is get your life together first. And the first part of getting your life together is accepting Christ. The rest of it is find out what he wants you to do and, and accept the lessons. Part of trying is a lot of listening to him, a lot of praying, and then things will work out. And it doesn't matter if they don't work out the greatest here. You are helping your life in the next one. And the literally, it's a millisecond compared to a millennium. A millisecond here to a millennium there. That's how big the time difference is to this life and the next. And I know to people it's like, how oh, it's so, no, it's not really long here. We're not here. We're just fleeting. That's why we should be trying the hardest we can. Because if we're working ourselves physically and mentally and we're growing, then you know what happens? When we're in our old age, we have something left. If we're sitting and being lethargic and not really trying and we're just a passive participant, passive participant in life, when we are old, we are going to suffer and we're going to have the pain of not trying. And like I said, I want the pain of trying, not the pain of not trying. No one respects you when you cave. They don't. They keep wanting you to cave more. 
people will they'll act like they despise you for trying but the truth is they have way more respect for you than when you cave to them you need to try but the thing too is there are some things that people just won't learn and once you put in the effort wipe your hands of it you did your part if they won't accept God or advice they're going to learn the hard way I would rather learn the not hard way because I spent most of my time learning the hard way and it doesn't work out so well so you know just start with reading the Bible start with something simple it's not hard start reading the Bible start working out start taking care of all your responsibilities you know just start marking off things and if you don't really know what to do with your life pray 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 when you drive somewhere and you're driving alone pray when you're in, when you're in your house bored pray what is it hurt you throw away tons of time everybody throws away so much time let's be honest with ourselves we throw away time so instead of throwing away our life we could try to be what God meant us to be and the thing is we're gonna have help God wants to help us we literally have a helping hand just waiting for us why wouldn't we try I would rather try and, and explain how joyous it is all this stuff and freedom we have there's like what ten commandments and actually Jesus boiled it down to two love the Lord your God and love your neighbor down to two what about all the stuff that they tell you you have to memorize pronouns not just of you know in general but for every individual person and you have to know if they change <laughs> God doesn't ask that much of us he doesn't we're selfish we don't want him in the center and we need him in the center and oh it's so hard not to just want instant things and we need to learn stuff we do we need to learn and I wasn't good I'm still not good our thoughts are never gonna be perfect and pure until we're we have our new bodies so that's not gonna happen now we're not gonna be perfect but we shouldn't just be so far removed from what God meant us to be. And we shouldn't just ban everything. Like, we, we, like turning to that when we could just be building things. Building actual stories. As a writer, it just bothers me. Like the, the, I, I love the fact that people were trying and they're showing the word of God in all these languages and everything and and just bi biblical stories <laughs> but the, like the the Christian fiction has been it's been lacking and a lot of the other stuff has been lacking we need to just pray for like us to be better and really like look and search for the ones that are good that have like the they have the 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 scripture right they're not down with the dogma they're they're uplifting but at the same time telling you to repent like you need to repent if somebody's telling you you don't need to they're wrong and the thing too when Jesus was forgiving people what did he say this is a little reminder just a smidge and it's a little secret, you know, that they might not tell you in church. He said to sin no more. Oh, yeah. And here's another little secret. If he said it once, remember the little, just little, little tidbit in there about we didn't write down every single thing. It was in there for a reason. 
I guarantee you, Jesus said a lot. And don't sin no more. It doesn't have to be written down every time. And you know, the whole story with Lot. You don't think that's in there for a reason? And you don't think he chose the particular people that he chose so that he could have those where he was negotiating with God about saving the city and how few it got down to that God would spare the city and the thing with Jonah and how they repented do you think that was the only time? The stuff that is in the Bible is so that we can have the smallest Bible, the most compact blessings of our Lord and Savior. It's the cliff notes of the cliff notes, and it has everything you need. God shouldn't have to write the same thing tons of times, but he still repeats stuff like his mercy endureth forever. God is loving. And you need to try. That's really what he wants. If you've read the whole thing, if you give up, you have a problem. You just do. You're probably shortening your life. If you really love your life on this planet that much, I can tell you, you're shortening your life. Because following God's ways, first of all, makes you healthier. And second of all, if you're doing God's will and work, who's he going to keep around longer? The ones doing his stuff or the ones who are just kind of filling the void or worse, being bad examples? It's pretty much common sense. <laughs> and it's just, it boggles my mind. I mean, like we have, we have so much freedom. Liberty comes from Christ. Okay, all of our freedom comes from that, not from any weird symbols or whatever, or whatever things we want to pretend. Liberty, justice, truth, all that. God, you better put up a Bible than anything else. It's not a flag. It's not a statue. It's God. God gave us justice. He gave us liberty. He gave us freedom. And most of all, he gave us love. And you get all that for free. And <laughs> the thing too. But I don't want to accept it. That's too much to ask. Like asking for forgiveness or like the thing is people obey so much stuff. They obey so much wickedness in their jobs and everything else. But it's too much to ask to obey God. Or to say I was wrong. Please forgive me. Please come into heart and save me. That's too much. Out of all the stuff that the world asks of you, the very, very, very little that God asks of you, and he offers so much freedom. <sighs> the thing is, there are people that get it, and that they, they focus on God. But sometimes they get like super zealous and they're like, yeah, God, and we're just going to go to church and sing super old hymns and nothing else. That may work with some people, but it's not going to change a lot of hearts or there's certain things that are going to work. You have to look at what is working too. If God is truth, <laughs> look at what the data shows and, and things that may have worked might not work any longer. Because people have already corrupted those things to the point that, like, the, the, the door is already closed on certain ways. Like, the door to door thing, it's going to be a lot harder now going door to door to try to save anyone. Going door to door now is, I don't think it's as effective as it was. And there's certain things you could try. It'd bless your heart for trying whatever you want to try. Maybe your way will work. Who am I to say? If that's the Holy Spirit moving, you try. But my thing is, is let's not just, not only do we need to try, 
but we need to be understanding that maybe our ways aren't always right. And that especially our arguments about like future prophecy, when it's going to be fulfilled and how. You know how many Jews there are in the world? There are tons. They still don't think that Jesus is their Messiah. There's a big, big argument over that. I think the evidence is overwhelming in Jesus' favor. The thing is, the prophecies were fulfilled in a way they never anticipated. And it was way more beautiful than they could have ever imagined. How do we know that the rest of it isn't going to be beyond what we can imagine? It's predicted, but we might not be able to see it. So being divided over the future, I don't think it's the greatest of ideas. Part of the reason I don't think it's one of the greatest of ideas, inside of the church, if we're going to have discussions about future prophecy and what it really means and what it is and have civil discourse, that, like, it all, flesh, flesh sharpens flesh just like iron sharpens iron, that's something we can do. And then we're prepared mentally for all the different possibilities of how it might play out. And more importantly, we're not fractured and divided. <laughs> Other question, what day should we worship? Every day. Why aren't there people in the church every day? It should be a like social gathering place. And yeah, we do need like serious times, but we should be teaching our kids in churches and raising them up in the fear of the Lord with their parents still there. One of them, at least there's just so many things we could try and whatever. If we want things to be better, we've got to change our ways. We've got to let, let the spirit guide us and we have to be fearless. And you know what? We have to be willing to accept things might be different than we anticipated. And that God's ways are not man's ways. And we may not understand how he works always. But the one way he does not work is by telling people that his word doesn't mean what his word means. His word is pretty clear. And the problem we have is we don't want to accept it. I'll accept it. More importantly, I'm going to work to change the conversation. And when some people try to basically make a point about how little we can do, I'm going to dare them to list all the things they can do. And then I'll answer their questions about what we can't do. Because you know what? They don't have enough time to list everything that God allows us to do in their entire life. That's how much stuff God allows us to do. And if we really, truly want to silence the voices that want to silence us, we would get them to list everything that God allows us. Instead of allowing them to manipulate the conversation into the few tiny things that God won't let you do. I'm sick of it. God allows us like just a vast, unlimited amount of stuff to do. You can go kayaking. <laughs> I mean, you can go jogging, hiking. And believe it or not, you can play wholesome video games. You can play all sorts of stuff. You can play cards. You can play pool. Probably shouldn't be betting on it. Doesn't mean you can't play things, especially because pull teaches you geometry and physics. And the, the, the thing too is we're not back in the days where we have to struggle. And I remember like in the reading 
and finding how horrified I, I became over the history of the church and and every time like people get free time they want to just be like you can't do anything that's not what it says it clearly is not what it says and that's absolutely wicked because if you read what it says no don't veer to the left or to the right and the left is saying all this stuff is allowed that isn't allowed and the right is saying all this stuff isn't allowed that God has said nothing about being wrong why would God give us technology if not to have free time eventually and the thing too is when we're all not farmers because there's so much technology you need more occupations so maybe just maybe uh -huh. It was God's plan. God planned it. Oh. So maybe you shouldn't be just saying everything's a sin. When there's no scriptural, not one, there's zero. Zilch nada on some of this stuff. And it's not being a legalist to say the stuff that's clearly written is wrong. But if there's nothing about a certain leisurely activity, then just shut up. <laughs> really, the, the thing too is nobody complains about movies. When was the last time I heard anybody complain about a movie where a married person is kissing somebody else who's married? That's, according to God, a sin. Two married people that are married to different people shouldn't be kissing. We shouldn't be watching their sin. But we won't talk about that, but we'll go after the low-hanging fruit of cartoons. That cartoons can't have different, you know, ways. They can't have adult themes. Which is actually, if you look at it from like a, a standpoint, the only way you can have certain themes is by a cartoon. Because you can't portray people kissing that aren't married. Just duh. But the thing is, is they would have they, people would have banned stuff on both sides. Why can't we create things? <laughs> Why do you have to go around looking just for things to ban instead of just making better stuff? You don't want to try. And so instead of trying. You want to discourage others. I'm all for age-appropriate stuff. And clearly saying a family is a family. And you can't have non-family-friendly content. Instead of taking the, 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 the family word and just stretching it so far it's meaningless. So that you can have everything on. If you let corporations dictate what family-friendly content is. Porn will be family-friendly before too long. We're almost there. It's pretty close. It does it's not family friendly content. And you know, it's it's amazing that only one side gets to decide what the word family friendly means. And it's never the ones that actually have like the right view of family friendly. And it just people don't want to try. <laughs> And I understand it. I didn't want to try for the longest time. But like the the facts support Christ. The facts support Christ. And I can tell you a lot, a lot of people have lost their faith and have had problems because of how forceful the church is when God is not forceful. God is like the perfect gentleman. And if we're not showing why they should be leave, why they should accept God, why they should act this way, instead of just trying to force people, like once your kids are over 12, if you're just trying to force them to go to church, when literally biblically you've already failed at that point, because when they're over 12, they should be able to choose. And they should choose to go to church. But the thing too, is maybe it's a mark on your church. 
if no kids want to go there, and also it's a mark if people want to go there, but it's just social time. Are you allowing for people to blossom and grow and to truly try, but at the same time not giving up on what the Word of God says? Because you don't have to limit the Word of God to have fun. But nor do you have to limit fun to support the Word of God. There's so many things that are fun that are supported by the Word of God and perfectly fine. And we need to do a better job. Not every song has to be like a hymn. Now, and I do understand people do have a point of like, there are things that are holy enough to sing in church versus on the radio. But when we get to the point that we're complaining what's on Christian radio, as long as it isn't like so incorrect. But the thing too is what I have a problem with that kind of stuff is if you're not going to be going for like the super holy to be a church, you need to be good enough that it could possibly be played on any radio. We got. We need to get good. And sometimes, maybe people aren't called to be certain things. And we're, we're not called to lie to them. You know? Look, how many churches do we have today? We're not supposed to have that many churches. That's why we have so many false preachers. We would have much better churches if we had more people in a true church. And the thing too is if you're, if there's one person in your church doing all the work and everybody's fine with that, you guys need help. You do. If you can sit back and you let somebody do everything or only a couple people, it, it's just insane. And the same thing too, like I, I can barely, I can't afford a new suit. If you're so concerned about a new suit or they have to wear a suit, I'm too fat to fit in my suit comfortably. And is that a symbol of Sunday best and God's excellence? Or maybe this is what it is a symbol of, of corporatism, of being a slave to a society of capitalism that isn't capitalism. It's this Frankenstein monster globalist monstrosity that has nothing to do with free market capitalism because the markets are rigged. And based on like debt manipulation and everything else. So don't tell me I have to wear a slave suit to go to church. If I'm properly covered, and you know what? <clears throat> Here's the thing. If I'm going to church and trying to be like really authentic, you want to go hard in the paint? You want to go real hard in the paint? Why aren't you wearing sackcloth and ash? You know? Why aren't you? Why aren't you? Where's your sackcloth and ash? So don't tell me I need to wear a suit that is my Sunday best. My Sunday best has nothing to do with that. I'd rather have a t-shirt that had scripture on it or a polo that had scripture all over it than a slave suit. Literally, they got you to wear a deuce. We wear a deuce. They wear a deuce around their neck. You think a deuce is a Sunday best? <laughs> Man, that's just insane. You're not trying. You're just showing off your wealth. And if you really believe that, all these churches that want people, people to wear the Sunday best, where's your sign-up sheet for giving away free shoot suits? I don't see one. I didn't see one. All those places that like that kind of stuff, how many of them actually give away suits? And actually that would help them because you know what? The problem is with a lot of things is I need to wear a slave suit to go to a slave interview. I do. 
If I want to get a job, I need to wear a suit and wear the noose around my neck. So, you know what? It. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But we have to conform. That's the rules of the professional society. So, it is what it is. But you got to try. And maybe we should recognize there are different ways for people to try. And that our ways might not be right. And that and we chase people away and I could tell you too I've heard it online and I've seen it other way if you're passing around the money plate so that people can see what you're giving why would I go there I should just walk out of every church that does that anymore because you know what that is wicked when you're trying to like shame people into giving money and I know we should tithe and want to joyously tithe, but that doesn't mean that we should just give to the church because the church had many functions back in the day that they were tithing to. So my 10% of my income shouldn't go to some church that just to pay a pastor who makes way more money than I do. Should go to organizations that actually help. But the problem is, is our country is in this world is so corrupt it's hard to find a charity that actually cares so i understand you're not wanting to try so maybe maybe instead of giving that the, your tenth you help out people that you know your tenth doesn't matter just to go to church and you know what if you're giving up your time and a lot of your time and just that could also be it if you have like no money so don't let people like trick you to think, oh, you just got to give me all your money. If you're volunteering <laughs> and you're giving what little you can, because let me tell you, these same people that want you to tithe, they sat silent and let the government make this economy be so horrific that you can't afford to tithe. They believe in stuff that is so far removed from God that they tell you to tithe. And the spear is left most of most of those places. I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned about a church. My relationship is with God. And it would be nice to have a church. A true church. But it doesn't have to look like a traditional church. And it doesn't have to be about lots of money. It could just be, you know, a few people sitting around watching somebody preach online. The best part is it could just be your family reading the Bible and watching sermons online. <laughs> because I hate to say it, but a lot of the local ones, they're not worth their salt. And the first thing they need to do is tell you to repent. And the second thing they need to do is tell you that you've been forgiven. And let God lead the way. That's it, man. Love God. Love each other. Repent. And let God lead. Pretty simple stuff. And I like to I like to see you find the flaw and love God. Love each other, repent, and let God lead. And if you think you could kind of come up with some kind of scripture, twist it so much that that doesn't work, you're wrong. And you, and you really need to get your, your head right and your heart right because it's, it's pretty basic, simple stuff. But the thing too, you got to remember, when God said love each other, that means that the, the things that we want are supposed to be good for all of us. And to be good for all of us, we need to get our heart right with God. And not want wicked things. And to pray to joyously want to serve Him. And if we try, we will succeed. Because we have the Holy Spirit. That's why it is frustrating that the Christians are on the top of everything. 
And the reason we're not is because we don't have our hearts right. We don't have everything right. And we've been told lies. We've been told lies from the very people who are supposed to help us to get closer to God. They even saying force because they want their numbers up instead of trying to make it great. And you know what? They don't ever shame anybody, but they should shame people because I was one of those kids of a church mom who basically did everything for the church. She didn't have a job. But she spent so much time in the church. You don't think that builds resentment? Who was helping her? And she made the mistake of not taking me with her. Your, your kids are supposed to be there. Because part of raising them is to do the work so the next generation knows what to do. And if you don't take them with you while you're doing the work, how are they going to know how to do the work? And the fact that no preacher ever said, Huh. Maybe you should have your kid with you. Huh. Maybe you shouldn't be leaving your kid so much. Huh. Maybe somebody should be helping you. Huh. Maybe I could preach about that. Huh. Churches are dead. Most of them are dead. Because they don't want to lose their income. And they care more about their income than your relationship with God. You know what? I want to try. And if I was a preacher, which I'm a writer, not a preacher. That I, as a, like I can be a critic. I see a lot of stuff that needs fixed. And the thing is, is the people that sometimes go like the hardest to the paint and then they're really, they got the doctrine good, but then it comes to certain things and they, they, they want to be too legalistic because, or not even legalistic, they just want to see, like somebody tells them something and they get in their head that it's bad. <laughs> like a beat can be bad. Verses can be bad. Because the lyrics are what's really getting to you. It's the beats that's used to take the lyrics in. When Sobs is literally a sog. It's an entire sog book. <clears throat> so the same people who are telling you that certain beats and stuff like might be bad, guess what? Your hymns, if you follow your actual logic, nothing but Psalms is allowed to be read. Nothing out of the Bible other than out of the Bible is supposed to be sung. There's tons of stuff in the Bible to sing. Their logic is if you followed it to its actual conclusion, you can't read or do anything outside of the Bible. That's what their actual logic is. But they've deemed some songs okay. Because they're old. I'm sorry, but... Man, you can have good music and good beats and not put me to sleep and still have deeper, better lyrics than some of the hymns. And the thing too is they just had a thing about like the the three wise men weren't kings. So like you know the song We Three Kings. Guess what? They weren't kings. So that's wrong. So why is that okay? You know? I just get frustrated. Because people are like, Whoa, Christianity is so boring, it's so bad and blah 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 blah. Really? <laughs> It's that way because you have some pretty people who like to harumph and who don't want to have fun. And you can praise God and God should be in every action. But you, you don't need to be like condescending about it because we're not better than anybody. We're not. We're not even good. So we should try. And that's all we could do, really. We could only try. And, and that's enough. I, I'm really sorry for running on and rambling, but I don't know. Hopefully this has been a blessing. If not, hey, it's on me. And hopefully God has maybe helped your hearts. But the thing is, the main point I want to say is don't give up, man. Anytime you can turn to God and ask for help. And that's what we should be doing. But not just when we're down. Like everything, every 
everything he's given us, we need to give thanks for. Because if we're not thankful for what he's given us, why would he give us any more? So let's try and thank God for everything we have. God is amazing. And he's given us so much freedom, it's just overwhelming sometimes. But yet, people let themselves be tricked. Because instead of instead of rejoicing at all that God has given us and allows us to do, they focus on what we can't do. Because they would have fitted with society. Well, God has blessed us so much. So I won't be told that God is very limiting when he's given us tons of freedom. So rejoice, you are blessed. Don't give up, try. And when you think it's over, pray and try some more.